everyone, this is Debbie from Project 39 Mini Albums. I showed a couple days ago this little sort of traveler's notebook um, journal, and I had a couple requests to show a tutorial, and so that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to make it, and then I'm going to show you an alternative using uh, laminating paper to uh, make another one. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, we'll start with making the cover. I have three pieces of chipboard, two or four by five and a half. I've already put some double-sided permanent adhesive on the back. I'm going to make sure it's burnished down. And then I've got the spine piece, which is just one inch by five and a half. In this book, I made it one and a half inches. And it's a little bit too big. I mean, it depends on how many papers you want to put in the book. So, but this is just going to be a small little book for notes and that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to do my best to center this top and bottom, side to side. That's not. You know what I'm going to do is add these just so it helps me. It was about three quarters of an inch on both sides. I'll do more. Okay. And then I'm going to grab double-sided quarter inch permanent adhesive and put it on both sides of the spine chipboard piece. Burnish that down real well. This is probably the only chance you'll get to burnish this. And then I'll take off the backing. It's how I'll start making a mini album in most cases, in some cases. All right, I'll peel off the backing. And so I'm going to overlap this on top of that quarter inch score tape. I want a little bit more smidgen, probably my favorite word, smidgen, showing. Does that look even? I think this looks like it was cut funky, but that's okay. You won't notice it when all done. So again, I'll put this overlapping that adhesive. That'll help it get a good stick. And it's not going to go anywhere. And now you can see this is what I used for the cover. I um, sized it. I kept the image the same. Meaning if it was like six by eight and I needed it five by seven, seven by five, I kept the proportions and just resized it so the whole image would show up. All right, now that I cut off the corners and you want to stay about an eighth of an inch away. Oops. All right, this is why you should always just burnish this by either going like this or like what I did, putting it on the surface. I think I was trying to circumvent the system here. All right, let's see if my glue comes out. No. There we go. Put a bead of glue. Wow. Not drawing a straight line today around the perimeter. Now I'll take my bone folder and smush that on the edge. Pull this over with my fingers. And there we go with that. There we go. That side came out much better. All right, so we're going to just burnish to distribute the glue. If any seeps out, you could either clean it up. I'm just being careful not to get it on my bone folder. Push this in, push that in. We're going to be hiding the glue, so it's no big deal. Yeah, I already bent this paper, but that's okay. Let's go like this and burnish that down.
Okay, I'm going to push in the corner here and the corner there. Bead of glue along the edge of the chipboard, around the perimeter, and zigzag. Use my bone folder to push it down and burnish. Okay, now I'm going to take the blunt edge and just push down in that crevice between the spine and the cover. Do it on this side too. What will happen is the double-sided adhesive on the top is going to meet with the double-sided adhesive on the bottom. So that's how that came out, the little dragonfly. I probably could have moved this down to get more of the dragonfly, but I'm okay with how it turned out. Okay, now I have this piece. This is just copy paper. And I want to make sure I get the right size on this. So I'm going to have to trim off a little. How much do I need here? Okay. It goes this way. I have the scorpion and the spider. There's writing here, so that's how I know what way it goes. All right, I'm just going to use glue. I might, might have used a double-sided adhesive tape. Put down the edge here. Or right on the side and in here because the paper is gonna we want it to stick there now it's copy paper so it's gonna you might see a little bit of the bumps but if you do your best to smooth it down you'll be okay I'm gonna put some Close to the outside edge as my shaky hands will allow it. All right, make sure I have the orientation right. Start at the edge here. So I've noticed I've got a lot here. I'll just take a straight edge and cut that down at some point. There we go. All right, find where the And then I'll move the cover of the book up and gently, I got a little cut there. There we go. I think I should not have used copy paper because it's so flimsy, but it's what I used. I'm still trying to figure out the digital world. All right, I'm going to turn this over, grab my straight edge and cut. Okay, I'm going to make three holes on the top and bottom. I'm at one, two, I'm at the fourth line, so it's probably three eighths of an inch. I'm going to make a hole one side. Come on, why do you keep moving? The other side. And then in between.
and do the same here. And I need a hole in the center. And since my arm doesn't reach on my uh, hole cutting tool, I'm using the old fashioned way, which is, I guess this is the right size. Yeah, it is the smaller one. So I have this piece, which I'll do my best to center this on. And make a hole. Okay, let's start with the center one so I can get rid of this tool. I'm using purple just because I like it. Put that down there and use this other implement. This is a We Are Memories Keeper set that I've had for quite a while. I only need it for the center one because, like I said, it couldn't reach. So I'm done with that. I'll put this in here. Okay, then I can use this for the other ones. So I'll put all three of these on one side. Now, do you need the eyelets? No. If you don't have eyelets or you don't feel like doing it, nobody will notice. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. And then three more down here. So I could have made, and probably should have made, like a um, template so I would get these holes in the exact same place for both sides, but I didn't. Okay, and there we go. Now I have two lengths of elastic, and the way to determine the size is I do three times the length of the spine. So there's one, two, three, and then some excess just because I'm sure I'll mess up. All right, we're going to start from underneath, go into. So this is underneath, this is the top. I'm going into the one on the bottom on the right hand side and go up to the top right hand side. Hold the string and then from the outside of the book go in the next hole and go into the bottom. And then go through the last hole and go to the top. All right, now we're going to take these strings and go in back through the center, the center of this one. And then tie these two together, making it fairly taut. There we go. And then I'll cut off the excess. So there we have one string, two strings, and one string. And then also I have another little piece of string and I'm going to go put it in the center. So I'm going to go with one of the strings in, now we're going to go from the outside, in through the center. And then I've got a little charm I'm going to put on and then go back through the center again.
No, you can pull this as much because that charm is going to keep it from going through. I'll tie a note, a note, tie a knot, and make sure it will hold the book. It's a little loose, so I'll probably retie it. But now we've got a charm on the outside, so that adds a little bit of something. What's going on with the lighting? But there's the witchy charm. Okay, and there we go. That's how to put the elastic in. Next, we're going to do the pages. I'm going to show you the pages. The pages are really simple. There's a pocket in the front. That's the inside. That's the inside back. And that's the back cover. So we'll have four folders that will have paper in. Now we're going to use... Um, lined paper because I figured out how to print it. So that's what we're going to do. So my intention was to make pockets on the front. And the way we make these little folders is we'll score it in a particular way, cut, and then make folders. I was doing this prototype and added this pocket onto what will be the back. And I'm going to leave it. It's no big deal. But let me show you how to do it. Just put them on the front and I'll show you how you can put it on the back. So you'll see there's going to be a tab on one side, the center cut, and then two tabs here where we're going to cut and fold that over and those tabs are going to make the pocket. Show you what I mean. You need four pieces of paper that are seven by seven and a half. I'm going to put the seven and a half side at the top, score it at half an inch, and score it at four. Now, with the tab, the smallest one on the bottom, we're going to rotate. So the seven inch side is at the top. And we're going to score at five. Now I'm going to rotate it again so these two smaller sections, actually three if you count the tab, are at the top. And I'm going to score at three just up to the score line. Just like that. I'll do it ahead again with this one. Half an inch. Four, rotate, five, rotate, three, up to the line. All right, so now I'm going to cut this long tab off. Cut right on the score line down to that other score line. And since we're at it, might as well miter. Now this one I'm going to cut on the score line up to that Four, uh, four inch score line, and then we'll cut this piece off. I'll go ahead and cut that and that. You notice I did cut into the paper. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get these done too. Okay, so now we have this. I'm going to turn this upside down so, well, we want it over here, but let's just turn it. This is where I got in trouble. Nope, we'll keep it here. We'll take these, no, I was right. Take these tabs and fold them in. I confuse myself sometimes. And then these will go up. And then this will fold. And that's how you have the pocket on the front. So just add glue. Fold and burnish. Now, if you wanted to, you could have a pocket on the inside, but I prefer the pockets on the outside. So this, this is the way I want to do it. This is the wrong way, but I'll use it for the back cover. So we'll do it again. I'll have the bulk of this down on the right. Fold that in. Fold that in. Burnish. Fold that and burnish. And then fold. 
and burnish that down. And we'll do this to make it a little booklet. And that's number three. Here's number four. These little tabs will be folded up. Hold this up. And there we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So we have our four pages. So now I've already cut out the papers to go on the pages. So they should fit, although is the writing correct? Yes. Now when we're doing it for the pocket, we're going to, so this little pocket is two inches, so we're going to cut this an inch and seven eighths. I'm going to take some Distress Oxide in Freed Burlap, which seems to match with this collection perfectly. And then that'll go on the pocket. And then this other piece will go right inside the pocket. There we go. I'm going to so There we go. So now we've covered the pocket. And then the rest of them should fit. We'll do the bugs. I might have to trim some of these down. But we'll just cover them all and then move on to the next step. So cover all of your folders, inside, outside, and the pocket. All right, now I'm going to put it all together. So I've got my cover. I've got my pages, I guess folders, if you will. And I also have four sets, uh, some have two, some have three, of uh, lined paper. So now these I printed, I purchased them from Kara Brandon Creations and printed them off and then cut them down to size a little bit smaller than I think the folders. So they are folded about three and three eighths by four and seven eighths. So I'll take a folder and I'll put in a group of the pages. And if I ever, if I see that they're too big, I'll just trim them down. Like that one's too big. I'll trim that one down. And that one's a little big, but in any case, let me show you for um, all intents and purposes, we take it. So I'll put the pages in. I'll go, um, I was going to use this for the front. I don't know why, I just liked it. And that just slips in. So there. Now you could staple these if you wanted to. I didn't feel the need. But if you prefer them stapled, you are quite welcome to do that. And this will go in here. And then the last page, which has the mistake pocket in the back, will go in the last one. So now all we need to do is decorate. And that is it. 
So you could add a lot more pages if you wanted to. Um, you could tea dye paper, which I have not done yet, but uh, I could. And then, like I said, decorate. We've got this little witchy thing in the front. So I probably will use something as a witch to embellish. But that's it. Just quick little sort of traveler's notebook style journals. That's what I have for you. Let me show you next how to do it without using cardstock. We're just going to print double-sided pages and make it that way. Okay, so the second one that I'm going to make doesn't have chipboard in it, and I actually printed the paper on both sides. So this paper is five and a half by nine, and I'm going to score it at four and at five. And I think it's a little bit longer than nine. So I'm going to trim it down about an eighth of an inch just because I don't think I cut it right to begin with. All right, and that's all the scoring we'll do for now. We'll get around the corners. Let's see, it's going around there already added out. I'm just going to go with the middle one. And I'm going to laminate this, but before I do, I'm going to decorate the front. All right, I just kept it very simple. I put one of the uh, journaling cards on top of some orange card stock. Now I'm taking it and putting it in a piece of laminating. So this normally would be a pouch, but I've already cut the pouch apart and used it for something else. So I have to be really careful to make sure that it's covered. And there we go. So hopefully this will come out okay. I have to make sure it's on there straight. And we should be good to go. I'm going to put it in the laminating pouch or laminating machine. This is an inexpensive one. I've had it for several years. And I use it to make just basically traveler's notebooks. I had turned it on and warmed it up. It takes about five minutes to warm up. And there we are. I'm going to turn this off and put this away. Uh, and then I'm going to take my corner rounder and round again the corners. Sometimes it doesn't want to. So I'll just grab my scissors and just cut that. If you don't round the corners, it's just really sharp. All right, after I do this, I'm going to grab my paper uh, scoreboard again, and I'm going to score it again, making sure that we can find where those score lines are. Over and do the same. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and put my eyelets on. I'm fast forwarding through this because I'm doing it the exact same way I did the last one. And now I will fold on our score lines here. And it actually folded pretty easily. So 
so where we there we have our little traveler's notebook now it's pretty stiff because of the laminating now let's get some um, elastic and we'll thread it and again in the interest of time refer to the previous part of the video we were put in the elastic I'm doing the exact same way So I printed out four of the journal pages, and I'll tell you the measurements. Seven by five. So I'll score each of them at three and a half. And then also I'll point out that I printed it double-sided. I put this pattern in the center. I'm going to round these corners. I'll use that same middle one. So I'll get that all done and get the papers together that we're going to put inside. And then I'll show you where we are. This is a real quick one. In Kara's journal kits are these pockets. I'm going to score them. I'm actually going to put it at the six inch mark because I've drawn drawn this line so I can see where it matches up. And I'll just score it on the lines that are already provided. And I've already done those. And so what I'm going to do is make pockets. So in the last one, I have added pockets to the journal by folding the cardstock. Since I'm not folding cardstock for this, we're going to just add pockets ourselves. So you have your choice. You can add it to the front, you can add it to the inside, you could do both. I'm going to change a couple. I'm going to add this one to the front. I'll just center it on. You know, I should have probably inked it before I put it on, but that's okay. And then, do I want that? Do I want something bigger? Maybe this. I can ink this up and add it to the page. And then go through my journal card. So I printed them out. So there's already a pattern on the back. I know I had one with roses somewhere. Here we go. I'm going to ink this up. And I'm just going to breeze by this. I'm just showing you that I'm folding these and I'll put them on some of the folders. I don't know that I want to cover this. I might find something next to that. But I am going to go around one corner of this and put this down as sort of a tuck spot on the inside. Oh, do I want this on the front? Nope, don't want to cover that up. Actually, I'm going to glue this side down too. I'll add the lined paper to the folders, and then I'll put them all in the book, and then I'll show you a final walkthrough in a little bit. All right, let me show you a final walkthrough. 
So I did, here's our little dangle. Um, and there is the, the elastic. And there is the witch. I said I could embellish this further, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I could put a, I could put other things on here, but I just like the fact that it's laminated and won't get messy. But I did add a pocket to the inside using some double-sided permanent adhesive and added a couple of journaling cards. I had this pom-pom ribbon sitting on my desk and decided to use it. There's uh, just a little cut apart. I had a couple extra apothecary labels and then some of the portraits. So I just added them in, whether they add to the effect, whether somebody uses the back of it to write a note, whether they use it to embellish their own projects, that is entirely up to them. So there is all of the fabulous printed paper. Oh, there's nothing in that pocket. Let's take that one and put that in the pocket. So here is the second one. There's a couple of things in that pocket too. Uh, one of the labels, one of the portraits, and then this fabulous, isn't that fabulous? So that goes in there. And there we have, reminds me of the yellow school lined paper. I've got one of the typewriters, just one of those uh, pockets that are open on two sides and sealed on two sides. Didn't want to cover this up. There is a pocket here with just a bunch of different ephemeras, different things. More pages to take notes, journal, add photographs, tickets, things you want to remember. There's a couple more things in there. So you notice I added some of these side pockets. I just took some extra paper, cut it the same size, rounded the corners, cut a little notch, and that's that. Here is some roses to go along with that. Pretty, pretty. That's a pretty cut apart. I added another crow. So that goes there. More room to journal. I could staple these on there but I, I just don't see the need. There's a rose to go with that rose paper. That's not the same rose as the one I had there, was it? No. And then here I have the witch in this little cut apart that's on the back cover. There is that cover. And there we go. Now you go this way. So there is that and I know the glare is obnoxious but oh well I did add a butterfly to the corner because I was going through all of my cut aparts to see what I had left so I used all three different kits I used the teal haunted Halloween I used the purple and I used the orange they're basically the same of course I I laminated that and showed you a quick way of doing it. This one, I just showed you how I made it with cardstock. So I hope you enjoyed this. I think they were pretty simple and easy to make. Hope you make some. I'd love to see if you do share over at Kara Brandon's Facebook group and let us know what you made. Thanks so much for watching and have a fabulous day.